I'm going to begin with an overview of the concepts and then move on to a step-by-step. -step. I started here referencing this Ghibli photo because I wanted to blend a object into the environment, but I'm kind of cheating here because I'm using a particle system to cover it up a bit. So instead of just blending the things with particle systems, I wanted to show how you can actually blend the meshes together. First thing we have here is an emission shader. This works if you don't actually want lighting because it looks as if they're the same thing, but they're two completely different objects. When you start looking at different angles, it becomes a bit more obvious that they're two different objects. So the second thing I'm going to show here is using the remesh tool to get a blended material or blended objects. So the core idea of this is going to be showing how to combine two meshes together in non-destructive ways. So you can see a can separate these and they're still two different objects so if you ever want to undo this it's a good way to have something that isn't destructive you can see here this works with the same scene we had earlier except you lose some of that detail so thinking of an idea you could have if you wanted to do something like this but maintain the detail is you could separate based on the area that touches the ground so for this plane, for example, all of the trimmings around where it interacts with the ground there, you could separate into its own mesh. You could then remesh that with the ground and then connect it back with the old mesh by doing bridge edge loops and then kind of smooth that out with sculpting to make them combine together and still look good. I didn't test that here, but that's my recommendation if you're trying to do something that maintains the volume of the mesh and all the detail of it. But I believe that's all the concepts for everything. It's just using the remesh tool, using materials with the same mapping so that they look like they're together. I won't be going over how to get the watercolor effect because this is more about the concepts I want to show rather than the actual artistry being showed. So the final result isn't going to look good, but I hope that the concepts help you with achieving something for yourself. So now I'm going to be getting into the step-by-step. -step. If you just wanted the overview of the concepts, you're not really going to learn anything more here unless you don't know how to do this stuff, then that's where the step-by-step -step will be useful. We'll begin here with a basic cube and then just add a sphere while you're in that mesh. We're going to do this by just simply adding a mesh when we're in edit mode. And I set the 3D cursor to the plane there so you can have it be set right in the center of the square. We're going to begin with a new material here, and I'm going to be showing how you can get the materials to look the same. First, we'll start with a simple emission shader, and then I'm going to get into how you can actually get the division going. So you can see on the left there, there's a division between the rock and the grass. And we're going to start with getting a geometry node and then plugging the position into the vector of a separate XYZ. We're separating this so we can get the gradient going on the Z axis, or Z. I'm American. I don't know why I'm saying Z. Anyways, then we're going to get a noise texture, plug the position into the vector there. This is so we can get a line that isn't so uh, uniform and straight. You can see on the left there it's more of wavy and we get that from the noise texture. Something to note here is you could do anything for the noise texture. It doesn't have to be noise. It could be a combination of things. It could be a wave texture or it could be just a straight line if that's the effect you want. Regardless, we're going to plug that into a color burn by using a mix RGB, turn that to color burn, and add it with the Z axis we had before. You can see I'm just showing the output here of what that looks like, and it creates a gradient across the object that you can change by tweaking that value. If you wanted to make this a more modular system, you could plug in an actual value into that value, so you could adjust it from outside. I explained in my previous tutorial how to group stuff together, so I won't get into it here. But next thing we're going to do is plug it into a color ramp. We do this so we can get a more defined shape from that noise texture. So you can see here it's much tighter now. This goes along with with my sort of stylized effect. If you wanted something more realistic, you're probably not gonna want a color ramp like that. You can just simply have the sort of gradient effect it was before rather than this harsh one. Next thing I'm gonna do is show the materials themselves. I begin here showing my material, but I'm gonna go into how you can actually do this with any material. The reason I'm beginning with mine is to show you that you can do this with literally any material you want. The way I've grouped this texture here, you can do that with any kind of material you have, literally any material. You just group them together doing Control G, and then you can just plug them into the two colors. There's only one key thing you need, and that's the mapping coordinate, and I'll get into how to do that. But here we can see I just combine these together, and you can see that blending going on. I'm going to duplicate this, tweak the values, and then you'll see how easily they blend together while looking like they're the same material, same mesh, without having a harsh change in the two, besides the obvious change of the gradient. Again, if you wanted something more smooth, you can just change that color ramp so it's not so harsh. Here, I'm just going over how you can tweak all the values. You can change it to the y-axis to get something to going from left to right. You can change it to the x-axis to get it going forward and back. There's a lot of tweaking you can do to help your own situation, but I should note that most of this only works if you have a straight cut in your two meshes. If you have something with more curvature to it, it's going to be a bit harder to get this effect. And to be honest, I'm not too sure how you'd get that, so I'm sorry that I'm kind of letting you down in that way if that's something you're looking for. But I've tried a lot to research how to get something like that, and I just couldn't find a way. So. If you find something, I'd be really interested in hearing about what you found on that. But for now, I just have to settle with doing a straight cut on one plane, essentially. 
So now we've gone over how to get the division. We're going to go into how to make the materials look joined together. And this is going to be using a texture coordinate, object info, and then a mapping texture. So I'm going to begin here showing how you can get the effect of having the two materials look joined together like they're part of the same material, even though they're two separate ones. This is by getting a texture coordinate, object info, and plugging that into mapping. And this mapping can go into literally anything you want. It can go into any sort of texture, any sort of combination of stuff. For the sake of tutorial here, I'm just going to do a simple Voronoi texture. But for example, with the watercolor I had before and how it looked like it was the same mesh, I just used the same mapping coordinate and plugged it into a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm hoping that I'm getting across that this is not limited to just one texture. It can be all sorts of stuff. It's really open to your own design. You can see we plug it into the color of the Voronoi. It really looks like they're two objects combined together. But it's a bit obvious when we look at different angles. So what we're going to do here is finally do that remesh. And again, this is completely non-destructive. And if you want to smooth it, you can do smooth shading there. So you can see here it's already getting that effect of blending them together. And I'm just going to do a simple mix RGB to get these two to be two different colors. So basically I'm taking the Voronoi and then plugging in two colors with the factor being the Voronoi. That way I can get a simple two-tone color palette going here just to show the concepts of this. And again here, these mix RGBs that I'm showing, you can essentially think of these as two different materials. They just have to have that same mapping coordinate. So now that I've chosen the color for these two mixes, we can just plug that into the mix there using the factor from the division. And we can see here it's a nice mix of the two. Again, this is a more stylized effect. So if you wanted a gradient, you could switch the color ramp there and get something for a more realistic effect. You would just have to change these two materials to realistic materials and you'd have a nice smooth blend between what are actually two different objects. So I think for what it is, it's a pretty good effect going on. I mean, it's easy to forget that these are just two completely different objects that just happen to be using the same material and it blends together very well. And it may not seem like much now because I'm just using a Voronoi, but if you experiment with using two different materials, I think you can see just how different you can make the two materials look. And you could even do stuff that doesn't use the same two materials. If you don't mind them looking different, then you could easily have two completely different materials and then sort of blend them together very smoothly by using that gradient there. I think I've emphasized enough that you can really do with this whatever you want. I'm just trying to give you the concepts of everything. Just showing here how it's non-destructive. We can completely separate that mesh and have two different objects. So that's everything for blending the two objects together. Now I'm going to go into how I did the particle system because I don't want to sort of leave you hanging with the introduction there with how I did the particle system within the plane itself. If you remember from the beginning, I had particles on only part of the plane and part of the rocks. So I'm going to show briefly there how to do that. Essentially, if you want to keep it remeshed, I would apply it first and then do this stuff with the actual particle system because when you remesh, it's going to completely negate all the vertex groups you have because the way we're going to do this is by using vertex groups. So I'll show here briefly. You just select everything you want to be part of the vertex group. Go down to this upside down green triangle on the right there. You're going to click a new vertex group and then assign it to whatever you have selected. And you can double check by just unselecting everything and then selecting again. So the next thing to do is to add a particle system. I won't go into how to do all this because I did it in my last tutorial. And there's also a lot of resources online for how to do particle systems. The key here is that you use a vertex group in the way I just showed. And then you go down to vertex groups in the particle system, drop down that tab. And then I recommend using the length. Apply that to the vertex group you have, and then the particle system will only be applied to those faces. You can change the emitter for where the vertices come from if you're not getting the effect you want. But you can see here that we're getting all of the grass coming from just those vertices. Again, this final result doesn't look that good. I'm not going to pretend like this is great artwork, but hopefully you can use these concepts in your own work. I think I'm going to end things there, so I hope this has been useful. If you have any better ideas for how to do this stuff, I'd love to hear what you come up with. Whatever you're working on, I hope these concepts have been useful to some degree, and I'll see you next time.